Hello everyone, Atrum here, and we're doing an M15 draft today. Um, hmm. So currently I have the Hornet's Nest highlighted. I don't actually know what I want. If I take Hornet's Nest, I'm passing on Netcaster Spider and Shaman of the Spring. I could take, like, Paragon of the New Dawns, because White's very powerful in this format. I could also take, like, Military Intelligence. Hornet's Nest does hold down the ground really well, and it allows you to do some funny little, like, combo things, so I'm gonna try it. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. I mean, the Death Touch Sliver is perfectly fine. I could also pick up, like, Invasive Species, that's pretty solid. Uh, Primnant Captain's actually pretty good, too. The issue with Primnant Captain is you really have to... It's a build-around-me card. You have to find every soldier you can, pretty much. Um, but it is a very nice card. I guess I could take the Preeminent Captain. We'll see what happens. We'll grab this Preeminent Captain. Obviously, it was passed, so... That... Stands for something, I guess. Another build around me card. Uh, this wall of limbs. I've never actually built a deck around wall of limbs. Never. Hmm. Could be interesting. Yeah, I know. It, it's normally. It's actually a very bad. It's not a great card. I was about to say very bad, but it's definitely the weakest of the walls, I feel, but it has a lot of potential. I've never actually gotten to build a deck around. I wonder what it'd be like. We'd have to build basically like a life gain deck. My other option is just to keep picking up soldiers too. I could just do black white. That's a reasonable enough color set in this, I believe. Um, I get to pick soldiers to use with preeminent captain. Then I have this wall of limbs to eventually figure out if I can do something with it. Alright, here I have a choice between typhoid rats and Shield of the Avatar. I actually really like Shield of the Avatar. I've played with it a few times, and I actually really like that card a lot. But Typhoid Rats is really powerful, just because it's a 1-1 one -one Death Toucher. Um, hmm. If I don't take the... Sh if I... The, neither, of with, neither of these is probably going to wheel. I mean, I've seen this wheel on occasion. I'm going to take the Typhoid Rats. Kind of commit to this something or another strategy. I guess. I mean, committing to that would make me take Oppressive Rays. Hmm, not a huge fan of Oppressive Rays. I mean, I don't mind it, but I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, I think I'm going to take this Coral Barrier. Never know where you can end up with a Coral Barrier. For now, we'll stick it over there. I didn't need the Oppressive Rays or the Necromancer's Assistant, though. So, keep your options open versus limited. You know? Hmm. I mean, I could do, like, Peel from Reality and Coral Barrier. Maybe the white goes away. Maybe the black goes away. Probably the black going away because Sanctify Charge is just powerful. Which point you take away the black and you end up with like a blue white. Military intelligence wield, so that's a good sign towards a blue white deck. Um I can pick up a marked by honor. I'm not a huge fan of it necessarily, but it is a reasonable enough card I feel. Or I could try to stick with some sort of um Esper build, taking the child all night. Actually, I like leaving my options open, so I'm going to take the uh, Child of Night, so that way I have the option of being the three colors. I mean, I don't necessarily want to be three colors, but having the option of having three very solid sets of colors seems perfectly fine to me. I don't need to take the Mind Sculpt. Um, I'm going to take Crowd's Favor because it's a lot harder to play around, actually near impossible, because if they just have an untapped creature, you can't play around it. Not really, at least. Alright, we'll throw a hammer. 
Eh. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so we got a, a series of dismal red cards at the end there. So right now we've got nine cards, three in each of these colors. Wow. This is rather spread out. Oh, well that's a good reason to go black. Obnixilis? Mm hmm. I mean, basically it's just a 4-4 trampling guy that the first of his two abilities won't trigger, but whenever another creature dies, will trigger. So, yeah, Obnixilis just seems ridiculous. I like Obnixilis. Hmm. So I have a choice here. A Cursed Spirit's pretty solid. Or you could take Tireless Missionaries to try to play into the Wall of Limbs plan. You can probably pick this up on the wheel, though. So I'm going to take this Accursed Spirit. Now, notice I'm passing some reasonable green cards. But again, we're in pack three, so it doesn't or two. It doesn't really matter quite as much as it did in pack uh, one. Hmm. Could pick up Blood Host. If you want to be really dorky, you can pick up Soul Mender to go with Wall Limbs, but just don't, unless it's a final card and you really, really just need something. Uh, I like picking up Welkin Turn to go with like the blue black plan. Um. Maybe I end up as blue-black. I only have two white cards, really. Well, if I get an Evolving Wilds, I would probably play Sanctified Charge, just because that card is very powerful in this format. So, but for now, we'll stick it over there. We'll sort this by... Well, we'll leave this like this, because it's actually sorted by CMC with the gap showing. Another Typhoid Rats, another Peel from Reality, a Crippling Blight, all reasonable cards. Um, I'm taking the Typhoid Rats, though. Hmm. Yeah, if I was still thinking about the Soldier plan, I could take the Kinsbale Skirmisher, or Kinsbally Skirmisher, but I'm going to just take another Typhoid Rats. My goal is going to be to maybe pick up since it wheeled the first time, maybe int military intelligence will wheel again. Who knows? Oh, now that's an interesting choice. Um, Nightfire Giant, anyone? I get the choice between Nightfire Giant, Shadow Cloak Vampire, and Crust or Eternal Thirst. I can probably pick up Eternal Thirst on the on the uh, wheel, maybe. I don't know. It's possible though. Um, Nightfire Giant just can be ridiculous in this format. I'm going to take it. Just having one or two red mana can make this guy ridiculous. Because in this format, which is very, very stall heavy, having things to break the stall, like these two, is very important. It doesn't require too much commitment, more than like a mountain or two. Because then it's just a 5 4 for 5, which is powerful. And then it also has its ability turned on. So. Hmm. Quickling, Divination, Evolving Wilds. I do like the Evolving Wilds. Because it gets me the red for Nightfire Giant. But I believe Quickling is the pick. Because it's a small, cheap flyer, um, saves a guy from removal, works great with military intelligence. I think it's the pickup. Okay, I could take a Carrion Crow, a Jace's Ingenuity, Eternal Thirst, or an Evolving Wilds here. Um, hmm. If I'm playing under the military intelligence plan, my goal is to end the game quicker. This is more of a control deck versus a military intelligence deck. This is more of a military intelligence deck card. It's a little slower because Enter's tapped, but that really doesn't affect how quickly it can attack. And it's a and it's a flyer, so I'm gonna take the Carrion Crow. Um. No, 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 no. Hmm. No, 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 no. Yeah, they all knows. Nothing changed on that one. 
Alright, we're just gonna grab that. <laughs> Perfect. The, sec the military intelligence did wheel, which is quite remarkable to have that wheel twice. And it's a great sign about what the blue aggro cards are gonna be for me. Um, I'm gonna take the. F Ooh, actually, Mind Rot might be playable in this deck. Since I'm a cheap aggro deck, Mind Rot might actually be playable. Wolems obviously became unplayable. Don't have any life gain anymore, except for Child Knight. Um, I could take Blood Host or I could take Black Cat. I'm actually fine grabbing the Black Cat for this deck because since my goal is going to be able to get in and just deal damage, I feel like that's going to be the better pick for me to have something that I can deal that I can just deal damage with. All right, throw another Future to Wizard in there. Okay, so so far so good. We've got a blue black thing going. Um, we've got double military intelligence. We've got f six creatures, CMC two or less, which hard to block, hard to block. They really don't want to block Black Cat. Hard to block, hard to block. And then when you go up to three, hard to block, hard to block. So all my guys currently are pretty hard to block, except for like Child of Night, and I guess the <laughs> these, which really that's still hard to block. Hmm, interesting. So we open Yisan in pack 3. We're going to pass on him, obviously. It doesn't go with our deck. The real choice is between Carrion Crow and an Amphim Path Mage. I'm favoring the Carrion Crow because it doesn't require the mana investment that the Amphim Path Mage does. So I'm going to take the Carrion Crow. Hmm. I could take Sign and Blood or Necrobite. Really, both of those are about. Hmm. Those are really the only picks. I don't really want Encrust. Hmm. Necrobite's good for keeping my guys alive to then swing again for military intelligence. I'm going to take the Necrobite. I could definitely see taking the Sign in Blood. It's a reasonable enough card. But I think the Necrobite will do me better. Okay, this is interesting. I have three real choices. I have the uh, Capture Kite Fins. Which uh, actually just helps other things get through. I have another Cursed Spirit, which just gets through pretty much. And then I have a Frost Lynx. Frost Lynx is probably the weakest of the three, so I'm not going to probably I'm not going to take it. So the real choice is: Do I want another top end, or do I want another quicker creature? Um, being CMC four or less in this case, I'm thinking I want another Cursed Spirit. I want my creatures to be hard to block. At which point we're probably also taking out this Coral Barrier. Really need it. I don't know about the Mine Rot. Okay, this is interesting. Um, we have Grave Digger, which is powerful in this format. The another set of kite fins, and a cursed spirit, or my favorite in this case, the Welkin Turn, <laughs> which is really, really weird. But you know, a two-one flyer works really well when you have military intelligence. So we're in Welkin Turn. Okay, I can grab an Avarice Amulet, since my guys are all hard to block anyways. Avarice Amulet just allows me to get through for extra damage and keep deploying threats. And the ability to keep deploying threats is the key thing. An Amphim Path Mage would be nice, but I want to deploy more threats. Alright, I really don't need anything from here. I guess I can grab an Jace's Ingenuity for late game. Help me draw, again, just the threat. More threats issue. I don't know if I'll play it necessarily. I probably will. Plus, I have something better. Alright. So, I get a di choice here Divination or Black Cat. The real question is do I want another Black Cat? Um, I think I'm actually fine with it. Even though Black Cat usually is not a good card, in a deck with double military intelligence, I feel like it's definitely better than it would be otherwise. 
Okay, so I have a choice between Endless Obedience and Nimbus of the Isles. I'm going to take the Nimbus of the Isles. Just part of the whole fact that pretty much everything your opponent... There's only like one creature in here, maybe two, which your opponent is fine blocking. Everything else is like Intimidate, Intimidate. Flying, 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 Flying. If it dies, the discard. Flying, Death Touch, <laughs> Flying. So basically my deck is just all about evasion here. Okay, I get to pick up a sign and blow it anyways. Yeah, fine, we'll take it across. I'll probably get cut. Kinda like that guy will get cut. Okay, I'm gonna take a kite fins as a top end. Uh sure. We'll take that. And that. And whatever's la left will go also here. So we're gonna have to cut three cards. Um mine racket's cut. That's that's one. I'm going to cut in crust because I don't want the double blue till much later on. Um, which point, I pretty much just want to cut like one card here. And it's probably just going to be one of these black cats. Hmm. Probably a black cat. Either that or it's like Jace's Ingenuity because I'm going to be drawing enough cards anyways. It's actually probably Jay's Ingenuity. I want to keep my top end really sparse. As we can see, the majority of my stuff is in the three or four drop or below. I want to keep the top end as sparse as possible. So I think this is probably fine. Um, Cause yeah. So if we look at our creatures versus our non-creature spells, just at the spell portion of it, what what everything does, right? We have come on, get over there. Throw yourselves out, dang it. <laughs> um I'm actually gonna sort it differently than CMC. I'm gonna sort it by what it does. So we have removal, we have card draw. So this is our seven non-creature spells. So we have three pieces of removal, four pieces of card draw. Um, all of our creatures, if you look at our creatures, we can put aside the ones that fall outside of this. But So they're not usually going to want to block a Death Touch guy unless they have something to throw away that they don't care about. Blocking Black Cat makes them discard a card at random, which... Isn't usually the greatest of thing, but it's better because of the military intelligences that I have. Welcome turn and quickling have flying, so I have five, six, seven, eight flyers. I have two death touch guys, two intimidate guys, and these two black cats. And then I have these two oddballs, which don't count towards the it sucks to block group. Most of my guys, it's really annoying for my opponent to attempt to have to block. So, I think we're going to go with this. I like the 10-7 split. I think it's probably right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh, um, just dawn on me. I don't have a red for the Nightfire Giant. That guy just became worse. I apologize about any noise you're hearing from upstairs. My upstairs neighbors have a talk. Um, anyways, um, Nightfire Giant just got significantly worse in my mind because that requires me to screw with my mana base. I think we're going to take it out. Instead, I'm thinking I'm going to, well, I'm going to be, I'm more of an aggressive deck. So I'm going to play an extra piece of removal in the form of Encrust. It's a little harder on my mana. Um, it's actually going to make me want to... Uh, what is it? Eh, I think that's fine. I'll add the extra blue because of it, I believe. Probably don't need to. Hmm. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15... Yeah, I guess they're right. Take out that. Put this back in there. Alright, we're going to sit like this. 
Um, this should be interesting. I'll see you all in round one.